So recently, some human scum have created QLocker, a ransomware that's targeting people with QNAP systems, and I wanted to share my experience with it, because the more people talking about this, the better, even if I don't have much of the voice. Yeah, just another day on the internet. But thankfully, for every bad thing on the internet, there's mm, 10% of a good thing. So I was noticing my files acting strangely, a lot of the uh, references I had of links and shortcuts weren't working. And the reason? Everything became 7-zip. And there's a wonderful little readme that's requesting Bitcoin. Yeah, they're asking 500 bucks or so worth in Bitcoin, and sadly a lot of people actually gave them the money. It looks like a strategy by asking a smaller amount of money that you'll just go, Oh, fine, I'll pay up. Anyone that's been around long enough with not just the internet, but technology knows you should always back up your files. So I do have a separate drive backing up most of my files, my media files, etc, etc. So I don't really give a shit. But of course, it's still really inconvenient to have to you know, run through all the copying and relinking everything. Going online, I found there are some articles addressing this issue. And um, QNAP themselves have released a security update and a malware remover. So of course, number one thing was to get that in uh, installed and run it. After that, I just had to use this command to reveal the 7-zip log file. In my case, I ran the malware scanner, so it was moved to another directory, which was listed below, thankfully, in this article. I've seen that people's results vary depending on when their ransomware ran until. I can't really tell. It looks like it's pretty complete, but a lot of the files were unencrypted, like the uh, MP4s, maybe the larger files. They weren't finished encrypting, I guess, when it was caught. So I guess that's one advantage to having a really underpowered processor for my NAS. But accessing that file and just using cat to view it on SSH, I could get the password. For some reason, it wasn't really working for me on my Mac system, but that's okay because I intended to use my desktop windows anyway, since I moved my Mac system back and forth a lot. So as you can see here, I could verify that the password does work with uh, 7-zip. But of course I have hundreds of thousands of files, if not more. This would have to be automated in some way. So the Bleeping Computer article does have a script and you could modify it with your own password to see if it works. But this script actually didn't work for me. Fortunately they do link to this YouTube video right here, which does have a script that worked for me and in fact it even one-ups the last script by deleting the shitty 7-zip that nobody wants. So fortunately that seems to be working and this is a very, very satisfying sight. Ah yes, victory. And just to top it all off, I have this other batch file that's just a really quick thing. You know, all those janky readme files that it creates, yep, time to get rid of those. So thankfully this wasn't too terrible of an experience because of the uh, really reactive community online, and it wasn't nearly as bad as something like a WannaCry a few years back. <laughs> But I hope that everyone's able to recover their files with um, all the help that you could get online without even getting a lot of extra tools or sketchy third-party software. From what I read too, uh, the exploit was with the media server service on the QNAP system, which is something I don't even use. So I think it's very important for people to look for these services that are turned on and check if they really need it because everything that's on could potentially be a road to vulnerability. I've actually been through data loss myself years ago before I started backing things up and working in IT. It was really painful. I actually dropped the hard drive and sent it into a professional recovery service and they couldn't do anything about it. The platters were just too damaged. So I really would not wish this upon anyone. So remember to give any IT professional you know a nice hug, we're very lonely. And hopefully, death finds the human scum that's doing this.